<clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Sean Gammon. I'm the chair of the Association of Vermont Credit Union's Board of Directors. Thank you for be being with us today. When you make motions or second any motions today, please state your name and your credit union name. I now call the 72nd Annual Meeting of the Association of Vermont Credit Unions to order. Back by popular demand, I'd like to welcome the million viewers on our YouTube channel today. <laughs> <clears throat> I call upon Secretary Hummel for incorporation of the official call into the minutes of this meeting and the report of the Credentials Committee. Uh, thank you. Uh, the official call to the 72nd Annual Meeting of the Association of Vermont Credit Unions was sent via electronic mail to all member credit unions on February 8th, 2019. The Credentials Committee reports that there are nine member credit unions present for a total of 18 votes. Thank you, Rick. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the general rules of order as published in the online yearbook. If anyone, anyone like a printed copy, please raise your hand. Is there a motion? Thank you. Second? Thank you, Mike. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the association's board of directors, Carrie Allen, vice chair. Jeff Morris, Treasurer, Rick Hummel, Secretary, and Greg Haar, Director. I'd also like to point out that Brett Smith and Lisa Heyer were unable to make it today, but thank them for their service as well. A few other introductions. Deputy Commissioner of Banking, Molly Dillon, from the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Jesse Rushelow from the accounting firm A.M. Peisch, and Richard Brock, from Association's Legal Counsel, Brock and Brock. Thank you for being here. Thank you for I am appointing Mr. Brock as parliamentarian for our business meeting today. And please join me in thanking the entire staff of the association for their hard work uh, supporting member credit unions throughout the year. I am appointing Mary Robert as our recording secretary for the minutes of the meeting. And I'd like to thank staff members Jen Malru and Heather Allsaver for serving, serving as our credentials committee today. The minutes of the 71st annual meeting are published in our online yearbook. If anybody would like a printed copy, please raise your hand. I'll entertain a motion to dispense from the reading of the minutes and accept them as published. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Nate. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Is there any new business to be conducted at this meeting? Hearing none, and given that there is no old business from last year's meeting, we'll move on to the elections. The nominating committee report is published in our online yearbook. I'd like to recognize and thank committee chair Lisa Heyer, as well as members Wanda Dunham and Bob Blank for serving on the committee. No absentee ballots were submitted and no petition requests were added. As a result, the candidate presented in the committee's report remains Greg Haar from New England Federal Credit Union. As there is one expiring position and one candidate, I declare Greg elected by acclamation. Congratulations, Greg. I'd also like to uh, thank and recognize Jim St. Peter for serving on the board for uh, the past almost six years. He was a committed director, always providing great insight uh, to us at the board level. I'm also very proud of the success of this association, helping and meeting the needs of credit unions of all different sizes, whether it's advocacy, regulatory support, or helping with a planning session. Uh, the association is here to help you, support you, and help you grow and prosper. Now, I did ask Joe for a little advice before making my remarks tonight, and uh, he didn't have any advice per se, but what he did tell me was, um, just remember what the famous author Mark Twain once said, it's better to appear foolish than open one's mouth and remove all doubt. 
So I appreciate that, Joe. <clears throat> I think the, the <clears throat> but as I uh, as I turn the meeting over to Joe, uh, I'd just like to thank Joe for his 41 years of service at the association. It's quite a commitment, and his leadership uh, we're very thankful for. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for queuing me up with uh, letting everybody know that someone who talks a lot is exhibiting their their lack of knowledge or whatnot, because I got a lot of stuff to say, but uh, I might have to shave it down now. Um, thank you to all of you for being here. I know being here for a business meeting of all things on a Friday afternoon um, is not the most exciting thing to be doing, and it's not the highlight of our weekend, but uh, just like in your own credit union, this is the reason that we, we gather, the primary reason that we gather. Uh, everything else that we do is kind of subservient to, to, to this, this weekend. Uh, but we really appreciate you taking time out of your, your work day or your retirement day or whatever day it is for you uh, to be here with us today and this weekend. Um, uh, Chairman Sean referenced our staff, and, and I have to say I'm real proud of the work that our staff does. You know, we have an eight member staff at the Association of My Credit Unions um, and they do a lot of fine work and you'll, you know, meet those people through the weekend and everything and some you've already met at registration, um, but they, you know, are very dedicated to service of Vermont Credit Unions and I'm really proud to serve with them and they do a great job for all of us, myself and, and yourselves included. Um, you know, we've all, we're a small trade association, large by Vermont standards, uh, larger than most by far trade association in the state of Vermont, but small uh, on a national standard, just like everything else in Vermont. Uh, but still with only 18 credit unions in our association, uh, we have a tremendous amount of uh, activity like Sean referenced and, and a lot to be proud of and a lot of success. Um, and I just want to share a couple highlights with you from last year. Um, you know, 2018 was our the 11th consecutive year uh, that we've provided a patronage refund to members of the association. Um, and I think last year it was about $150,000 or so, give or take. And so all told over those 11 years, and it started small and, and ramped up over the years, um, but we've returned about $1.3 to $1.5 million to member credit unions. And um, that we're pretty proud of that. Um, and, you know, that's something that I hope that, you know, all credit unions of Vermont recognize that it's a little unusual among credit union leagues nationwide, of which there's a dwindling number. Uh, so we're proud, one, to be in existence, and two, more proud uh, to be able to have some kind of financial return for our member credit unions. Um, that's not our reason for being, that's not how we measure our success, uh, but to the extent that we've been able to do that for the past 11 years, uh, we're really proud of that. With that said, uh, in recent board meetings, we've also been looking at other ways to put dollars uh, to work on behalf of all credit unions of Vermont. And we're looking at, it was many years ago that we participated or coordinated at a state level, uh, a statewide um, advertising campaign. And you may have read in recent months about CUNA having a social media-based awareness campaign, and we've looked at that closely and are exploring the possibility of joining with some of our sister credit union leagues around the country in uh, diverting some dollars to that, to try to get that going for Vermont credit unions to build awareness among Vermont consumers more than it already is. Although it's pretty high already, but 60% of Vermonters uh, that are members of one or more of your credit unions. And that's really high uh, by state standards. Uh, so that's something for all of us to be really proud of. Um, We've been doing our uh, ATM and debit card program, Q card we call it, for, oh boy, it's over 20 years and I don't know, less than 30, 20 or 30 years anyway. Um, and so, and that's been, you know, real valuable for the credit unions that have participated in it, small to middling sized credit unions. But just to put things in perspective for you, um, we process about uh, 3.7 million transactions a year that uh, total about $150 million in the value of those transactions. And, and that's just from 25,000 cards between those credit unions. Those numbers are small in the debit uh, processing world, uh, but unique uh, for a credit union league, of, a trade association. Uh, there's not. There's only a couple in the country that are involved in this line of business, um, and we're certainly uh, been doing it for a long time and successful, and really pleased to be able to be continue providing that service to member credit unions. 
Um, you know, in our most recent, you've heard us talk about this before, our most recent and probably our greatest success in recent years is our indirect lending program. Um, and Vice President Brian Kent does a great job spearheading that program. Um, you know, we only have seven credit unions in Vermont that are active on that program today. But last year, between those seven credit unions and the 140 car dealerships that we've gone around and gotten to participate in that program, we financed, or those credit unions financed, 10,000 car loans for members of credit unions for a value of about $166 million. Um, and I think that's just a huge success by Vermont standards anyway. And that's something that those participating credit unions and we in the office are really, really proud of. Um, enough so that um, we uh, late last year, early this year, entered into an arrangement with our sister organization in Connecticut. where We're going to be extending our program to credit unions in Connecticut and car dealers in Connecticut so that they can benefit uh, from that program as well. And other states have it, but we have a unique arrangement uh, with CU Direct that Brian was able to negotiate for us and that has contributed to our success. And so we hope to replicate it in Connecticut with those credit unions too. A uh, first in 2018, um, in the first in my 40, you said 41 years that I've been here, is uh, our first associate member of uh, the Association of Vermont Credit Unions. Um, and that CECOM Federal Credit Union, we wrote about that in our newsletter a while back, but CECOM is about a $550 million credit union in uh, Messina, New York, I think it's based. Um, and they branched sometime during 2018 across the top of New York State and got to Lake Champlain and figured, well, what's across the lake? And that's uh, Vermont. Uh, and so they expanded the field of membership into Vermont as well. And this fall, they'll be locating, I think it's like three branches somewhere in the northwestern part of the state of Vermont. Um, and they think it's important to be participating in the gathering of credit unions that we have here in Vermont and the information sharing and our advocacy efforts and whatnot. So they uh, saw fit to join our association. Um, and that was made possible by a bylaw amendment that some of you might remember that we uh, made in our bylaws a couple of years ago. Um, and the last thing that I want, I want to leave you with is, um, you know, as I, I always tell everybody, no matter where I am, in spite of all the different kinds of things that we do, whether it's, uh, you know, information sharing or an education session or a weekend of meeting like this or whatever else, service programs like I talked about, the most important thing that we do, the reason that, that we have an association is to represent credit unions in the Vermont State House and before our members of Congress. Um, you know, in a typical biennium, like the one ending in 2018, um, we, our advocacy team, which I'm very, very proud of, uh, reviews about 1,200 pieces of legislation. You're going to hear from Deputy Commissioner Molly Dillon in a few minutes, and, and she, well, I don't know if she does, but people that work for her review a lot of those pieces of legislation too. Um, and it's a thankless task. You've got to, you know, troll through all of those bills. And even though the vast majority of them don't directly affect um, your area, credit unions, in our case, financial services, you know, we still review everything that gets introduced or any possible connection to credit unions. You'd be surprised sometimes uh, what the connectivity is. And then it doesn't mean that later in the session, like at this time of year right now with the legislature winding down, well, tomorrow or early next week, um, that some amendment doesn't get placed on some kind of must, piece, must pass piece of legislation uh, that has bearing on financial services. Uh, so we're very active in that arena. And I, I tell you every year in recent history, um, and I'm, I'm proud to continue saying it, that we have a really strong presence in the Vermont State House. Um, every day of the legislative session. And, um, you know, because of that, we're in good stead with all of the legislators that we need to be in good stead with in the Vermont legislature, uh, partly because of our great advocacy team, partly because of the connections that some of you uh, share with us or make when you join us in the state house for our credit union day in the state house or through one-on-one -on -one connections when called upon later on when there's a critical piece of legislation. At a federal level, you know, we continue to have a really great relationship with our three members of Congress. Um, and again, uh, contrary to the size state that we are and the number of credit unions that we have, having 40 plus people, representatives of your credit unions and others that aren't here this afternoon, trek with us in February, March to DC to CUNA's Governor Affairs Conference is a big deal uh, from such a small number of credit unions that we have in such a small state. 
And then we do that again uh, in the fall, uh, September, October timeframe, where we have some credit union leaders from Vermont, a dozen or so go with us, no meeting involved or anything, but but doing a hike the hill then. And we we're just really fortunate to have the support of all of you in our advocacy efforts, whether it's trekking to Washington, coming to our state house, uh, you know, buttonholing the legislator that lives next door to you or, or whatever. Uh, all of us that are on the advocacy team for the association representing your interests, you know, they expect to hear from us, but they don't expect to hear from you. And it means more coming from constituents like, like all of you than it does from us. Uh, so I'm really proud of our advocacy team. I'm proud of our staff and I'm proud of our board of directors. And, you know, we didn't give them a round of applause yet. So how about we do that right now? Thank you. Because Just like in your own credit union, they're volunteers and they're, con what, I can't hear you? <laughs> Sorry, we'll speak up. So this mic isn't work, doesn't, it's not connected to a sound system. So I'll speak up. So, all right, so we just gave a round of applause to the board of directors. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, yeah, I don't think everybody's gonna appreciate me starting over. <laughs> Okay, well, with that said, <laughs> thank you for your attendance again this weekend, and thank you to our board and staff, and we hope you have a great weekend with us. Thank you, Joe. Are, are there any questions or discussions on any of our reports from this business meeting? At this time, I entertain a motion to dispense with further reports and accept them as published. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Corey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Pleased to have with us Molly Dillon today, Deputy Commissioner of Banking. Please come up. Thank you. I'll try to yell. Get out of here. <laughs> it's a little strange to have it right there and not have it work. <laughs> So thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. The uh, commissioner happens to be in Washington, D.C. So um, I'm happy to um, be here and tell you a few things. I know there are a few people in the audience who were at the Under the Dome um, event that Joe was talking about. So if you hear something twice, maybe it's, it's important. I don't know whatever Mark Twain said, I'll try to be short. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, someone said they'd like to hear what's going on in the, in the department and um, in the department overall, not just in our group, but uh, as you can imagine, there's been a lot of activity. As Joe alluded to uh, during the legislative session, there were over a thousand bills introduced um, early on and many of them, uh, tangentially seem to help, uh, seem to include especially our insurance division. So paid family leave and a number of those kinds of bills that weren't really originated by our team, but have big impacts on how we would um, regulate them and that kind of thing. So um, it's been a very, it's always busy in the springtime uh, with the session in operation, but um, it does seem this year with the volume of bills that there was more going on. Um, and I can attest to the fact that you are um, regularly and well represented at the State House um, because, in fact, we were appreciative that uh, Joe and the team participated in some uh, t testimony that we had because, in the banking side, we redid all of our licensing. Um, the bill in Title VIII is, was very uh, uh, old and built upon. So it was like an old house that you just kept making additions and additions. And if a plumber ever came, I'm sure they could never have figured out where all the water went to and came from. So we just kind of pulled it all together to make it a little bit uh, more user friendly. Um, I wish I'd thought of that when we were talking to the House Commerce Committee because it was 150 pages. So when they first saw it, it was like, what do you think we're going to do with this? <laughs> but we got through it and uh, we got it signed. The governor signed it last week. So there were a couple things in there that um, that I think will help. Well, initially might not help, but in the long run, this one will help. Um, we're going to ask all of you to let us know when you close an ATM 
because if we don't know when you close an ATM, we still think it's open. We're still supposed to go look and see if it has the disclosures on it and if it's run, doing the right thing. So um, we, but we will be in touch with you because we're going to um, kick that off with asking you to verify where all your current um, ATMs are. And then we will ask for you to let us know and then say if you close one so that will help us with our record keeping but we'll make it easy as we can for you um another one uh that uh what happened last year for some of you was using your name by a company that was soliciting mortgage uh, life insurance business but it made it they made it look like it was coming from some of your organizations so we really beefed up the possibility for us to do something we weren't able to last fall we had to rely on the um, attorney general's office who did follow through um, but we couldn't do anything and we know that there's a, a, a statute in massachusetts that we could copy so we put that into the this bill it also gives each of you an opportunity to um, uh, look for uh, remuneration if uh, you have if someone has used your name inappropriately so uh, kind of a double it should be very discouraging for anybody to do that ever again um, we um, added a few changes in uh, the licensing that makes it uh, a little bit more consistent with what we ask for but um, I think uh, at, I think there are some lessons to be learned about that whole um, part of the business. So, um, as you know, I was in industry, you might know, I was in industry before, and one of the most surprising things that I learned going to the department was this whole uh, idea of the way we regulate through licensing of many, many of these companies that um, see, that are doing the business you do as credit unions and banks. You know, the money transmitters, loan uh, solicitors, the loan servicers, that whole realm, debt adjusters. I know you're not doing debt adjusting, but I'm sure you're doing debt counseling often in your work, just as the banks do. And um, to give you a little idea of how much this is changing, uh, we license over 2,100 in uh, separate companies in licensing compared to in the state our six banks and 13 state chartered credit unions so these are companies doing business all over the united states and the example i usually give because most of you are very aware of what it what's happening is um quicken loans and rocket mortgage who are now the second largest largest mortgage originators in vermont and I know we all talk about, oh, you know, people in Vermont want to really talk to somebody, and yet they've grown from four to two in two years. So um, I think uh, our credit unions in Vermont are, are stable and strong. In the United States across the whole, they're shrinking a lot. That has not slowed down. Um, at the last credit union meeting I went to, Someone projected that um, in the not too distant future, I don't think they said at the end of this year, but perhaps the end of next year, uh, there could be fewer credit unions than banks for the first time ever. And this is mostly what I've seen or surmise is the Midwest of the United States and kind of some of the bigger states, Texas and California. So, you know, that's, that's just what's happening. Um, in the national scene, concerns about liquidity, uh, credit concentrations, um, and um, um, cybersecurity for all of us with what's happening. In Vermont, I think we don't see a lot of this, those same things. Um, we are special, I guess, but I think that for your to take home with you, what what we're noticing is that maybe with all that's going on, with trying to uh, maintain liquidity and get loans and do all the work we'd like to do with our customers, we, we are encouraging all of you to take a look at making sure your supervisor committee, committees, supervisory committees and your audit um, items are being tracked and followed through on. And not just take them in, but get them done. Um, because that can come back to 
haunt you when it's something that's kind of a leftover. But we haven't had some of the other concerns we've seen um, nationally as much. Um, though, I will also say that nationally, it was talked about that uh, in terms of liquidity, the opportunity for um, equity, um, equity partners and other kinds of ways for companies to get deposits, not really deposits, but to make investments that might in the past have been your deposit base has created some of that concern on a national level about liquidity and deposit growth. So I can, I think I could be pretty safe in saying that I suspect that anybody you talk to who comes to see you from the NCUA will be focused on that because of this other source of sort of like shadow banking money that's out there, which again, um, kind of impacts the licensing arena and all kinds of things online for, they don't call it deposits, but that's what's happening. So if I could leave you one thought for the board to consider or all of you to just think about thinking down the road. You all have been much better at um, using uh, service bureaus and your QSOs and coming together to have the credit union be really customer facing and finding ways to do a lot of your backroom operations jointly and together, the credit card program that you talk about, the indirect lending and the th kind of things that Joe does. And I wasn't paid. This isn't a paid announcement. <laughs> um, but e even on a national level, the way that wor has worked for you, it's pretty much different than the banking world. But I, I would, I'd like to, I have encouraged um, both you and the bankers to think about the group of you together is a big enough group to help look at your core, help convince your core processors to find a different way to charge you. Because I think they see trans individual transactions going down or being the cheaper transactions. And so for, for plugging in all of these new novel ways that millennials and a lot of people want to do business like Roger Mortgage, it's, it's expensive and difficult for them to make that work with their giant systems. But I think it's going to be pressure from groups like yours that will help them see the light that for their own future, um, that might be a way for them to think about how to give you all some better service. And with that, if does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much for inviting me. And um, it's been a pleasure to work with um, Joe on our public service announcements and um, to um, stay in touch uh, as a representative of you. We uh, talked with him about the bills we, this, this bill we had coming out to make sure it, it worked with the way you view the world. And we appreciate that very much. So thank you for inviting me. <clears throat> Thank you, Molly. I'll now ask Tracy McNeil from CUNA Mutual Group to come up. Thank you, Sean. Um, on behalf of CUNA Mutual Group and Jeff Pierce, who couldn't be here today, I just want to thank the association, um, all the board of directors, and our credit unions that we serve in Vermont. We appreciate your partnership. Um, when I think about our alignment, the credit union system, CUNA Mutual, what we're doing every day. We're really trying to help more people in more ways that really matter to them. And the heart of CUNA Mutual's purpose to help people achieve financial security. And as we live into that purpose, we are working um, differently to serve you and your members. Last year, I told you we invested $250 million in innovation and in data and analytics and in companies that are going to help open new opportunities. And Molly, you know, you just said 2,100 other types of companies are coming in at your core business. So I, I, it just fits into exactly that. We're looking um, today, we're trying to deliver an experience to your members more digitally 
um, that's personalized, that delivers that instant gratification so that that adds value to their credit union membership. I think top of mind for all of us is the future. What is the future going to hold? So you're seeing, we're, you're going to see more investments from us this year, 160 million um, through our CMFG Ventures, which is our venture capital arm. We're watching fintechs. We're looking at fintechs that are going to align with credit unions, that are going to develop um, opportunities for more profitable opportunities for credit unions to be there for the long term. So just a few examples. We just acquired Meridor. Um, it is a digital lending platform to help you guys grow personal uh, business loans. And Finnovation, which is a technology integration uh, data company that's going to help us with the share data and systems and then develop our documents and deliver updates, have more automation, have faster accessibility to get you guys that compliance information in real time. So today, more than 20 million consumers are protected through our True Stage program. And when you think about the other protection programs, that number jumps to 30 million consumers. CUNY Mutual remains the most single largest supporter, financial supporter of the credit union system. And you know us. We've been here 85 years. Um, you know, we've paid $1.3 in benefits just last year. Seven million of that came back to Vermont credit unions. And we, with your support, plan to be here for another, uh, for your continued support. And I hope that I get the opportunity to talk with you all during the event and enjoy. Thank you, Tracy. I will now ask Denise Nowinski from Tricorp Federal Credit Union come up. Okay, I was told I had like less than five minutes. So here goes. I'm here in place of Steve. Steve's not here today. He will be here later tonight. But Tricor likes to thank all of you for your continued support throughout the years. Our focus continues to be on our core services that we provide you. Correspondent, settlement, short-term liquidity options, and our partnered services. Certainly a strong financial position has to be the foundation of our business practices. That said, we are performing very well in all areas of risk measurement, whether it be credit or interest rate risk, NEV or capital ratios. Tricor is not only meeting these regulatory requirements, but in many cases we are exceeding them. Credit unions, uh, their loan growth continues to be very strong. While it has reduced Tricor's balance sheet as credit unions continue to use their liquidity options with us, we are positioned to add additional $170 million in borrowing sources to meet our members' liquidity flows. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Joe Bergeron as a board member. Um, George, Joe's been on our board for many, many years. I, you, 41 here, I don't know how many with us, Not but 41. no, <laughs> but many. Joe's perspective, he, he represents the Vermont credit unions, but Joe's perspective from a president of, of a league brings a unique look at different issues that our member credit unions, CEOs and CFOs have. So bringing Joe in is, it's great. So thank you, Joe. Thank you. I'd like to say Deb Vogt. Some of you know Deb. She's our compliance officer. She was a business development rep for many, many years with us. She's been with us for 20 years. She is retiring at the end of June. Uh, we do have a replacement for her, but it won't be Deb. So thank you, Deb. And we are committed to be a strong partner with you, our members to foster growth for the success of all of you and for your members. And we thank you very, very much for your business. That's it. <clears throat> thank you, Denise. And thank you, for all, thank you all for your participation in today's business meeting. 
The exhibitor hall and reception opens at four o'clock, followed by dinner outside in the pavilion at 6.30. And uh, at 7.30, don't forget to vote for your favorite director in the Johnny Cash lookalike contest. <laughs> Uh, this <laughs> thank you joe <clears throat> at this time i'll entertain a motion to adjourn thank you is there a second thank you uh bob blake all in favor opposed so moved the sep the 72nd annual meeting of the association of vermont credit unions now stands adjourned